Today we're thinking about why when a child or indeed an adult is anxious, it's important that we don't totally avoid the anxiety provoking thing. Now, this is tricky because if we are caring for working with supporting someone um, for whom a person, a place, a situation makes them very, very anxious, then our gut instinct is often to go, OK, let's take you away from that. And I most often see this with children who are experiencing school anxiety. Now, what we need to understand is a little bit about how when we avoid the anxiety provoking thing, sometimes we can make things worse inadvertently. So what happens is our brain goes, I can't go to school. I can't be in that place. The world will end. And it might not be that if we actually picked it apart and talked to the child that they'd feel the world would actually end. But they feel on some deep visceral level that bad things will happen. This will be bad. It will be horrible. I can't do it. So they get very anxious. They might get really distressed. They don't want to go there. And we don't want them to be distressed. So we don't make them go. That's a completely normal human kind reaction. However, when they then don't go and do the thing, go to the place, be with the person, do the experience that makes them feel that things will be horrible and the world will end and ah, then what their brain says is, whoa, phew, okay, good. If we'd have done that thing, all these terrible things would have happened, but we didn't do it and it was okay. We'd better not do it again. And it makes us a little bit more anxious next time. And what we need to do instead is to provide positive or it doesn't have to be positive, even neutral experiences of the thing, place, situation, experience about which someone is anxious to try and break that thought pattern. We're trying to create what we call cognitive dissonance. So we kind of disrupt our thinking, basically. So when I'm going, I can't do this thing, I can't go to this place, I can't have this experience because it feels too awful and the world will end. What needs to happen is for a supporting adult to scaffold and support my access to that thing so I can do it and go, oh, actually the bad things didn't happen. It was OK. I managed. And we need to make sure if we're going to essentially expose someone to the thing that worries them, that they do not have a negative experience. The very last thing we want is to build into that cycle of anxiety for the, the kid to feel, I told you so. I told you if I went, awful things would happen and they did and now we definitely can't go. We need that not to happen. So we've got to plan and prepare and scaffold really carefully. But if we're able to enable them to encounter the thing, and it's okay, doesn't have to be unicorns and rainbows, even if it's just okay and they manage, then that begins to make them think, okay, the thing didn't happen. Maybe I can do this. Maybe I can try the next step. So a really graduated approach to this is the best way, introducing things really slowly, planning really carefully, putting the right support in place and crucially using our if then planning. So actually thinking through why are we scared of this thing, place, situation? What are the things that we think might happen? And crucially, what can we do if those things do begin to happen? So you might, for example, have a child who's really, really anxious socially and they're really worried that if they go into a situation with people um, that everyone will start staring them or they'll say something stupid or they'll begin to feel very worried. And then we would think, OK, what strategies, technique or support do we have in place to enable you to begin to recognise that this is happening and to change the situation or change how you feel? Are there breathing strategies, relaxation strategies, whatever it might be? So really careful planning. What we can't do to break this cycle is just throw the kid in and hope for the best because we may end up compounding their fears, feeding into the worry. But with support, scaffolding, good preparation, we can provide them with that neutral or maybe, maybe positive experience that shows them that it's okay, I can do this, let's try the next step.